Keyshawn. All right, on the Dick Knight. Oh, nice fish. Oh, what a beautiful fish. Look at that beautiful rainbow. What a dandy fish. Wow. Awesome. Just totally awesome. Let me get reorganized here. Get him on a stringer and uh, get back at it. On the dick knight. The tiny dick knight at that. Let me show you this. Uh, let me show you this dick knight spoon. Little tiny dick knight doing big work today. That's a really nice fish. That's two and a half, three pound fish. So awesome. Howdy folks, Cal Kellogg here. As you can see from that clip I shot last October at Lake Davis, little tiny spoons like a little tiny dick knight can certainly draw strikes from some big giant trout. Now, all in all, you know, when I'm out trolling for trout and I'm looking to go big, I'm pulling something big, like this salmon spoon from Silver Horde, or this uh, this magnum-sized uh, Speedy Shiner, something like that. The problem is, the situation has to be right for those big spoons to work, and you've got to be at the right body of water. If you go out to Lake Davis and spend your time pulling this big Silver Horde around, you might catch something on it, no doubt about it but it's a low percentage lure in a lake like that. So let's talk a little bit about small spoons. Let's talk about the situations where they can help you catch more and bigger trout. And uh, I'll show you some of my favorite small spoons and we'll wrap up with a tip when it comes to fishing small spoons. So let's get started. When you use a small spoon, when you use a spoon like this tea tiny, little bitty copper and red dick knight that that is that's just a dandy looking spoon hold it up a little closer here um when you use a spoon like that i use them at two different times i use them when i'm at lakes where the predominant forage items are insects the trout are already used to targeting small items most of the time not to say they won't grab a minnow or a sculpin or something if it comes by, but day in, day out, they make their living eating small caddis larvae, um, mayfly larvae, stuff like that. Maybe an occasional, you know, a dragonfly nymph, something like that. But by and large, the forage that they're looking for is small. That's one situation. Another situation occurs when the fish are pressured or the moon is full, they're, they're, they're finicky. For whatever reason, they're not feeling it. They're not chasing, they're, they're off the feed and you gotta show them something really non-obtrusive and that's the time to go small. Had a guy reach out to me this winter and say, you know, I'm, I'm fishing Don Pedro Reservoir. I could see these big rainbows swimming around and they will not bite. Now, I don't know if he caught them, but when I'm in that situation, I downsize slow down, run smaller lures, and chances are you're going to hook up. And I learned that fly fishing. If, uh, if the big stuff, particularly, you know, the subsurface flies, if the bigger ones aren't working or you're in a situation like on Hat Creek where the fish get really, really pressured, if you start downsizing, eventually you'll start catching those fish that guys cannot catch with spinners and power bait and all those other things simply because the fish are conditioned to fear those offerings. But man, you show them a size 16 nymph, they'll jump all over it. So what are some of my favorite small spoons? And I honestly, I would not go fishing without these. Don't use them every time I go out, but uh, when I need them, I really need them. So of course, I, I just mentioned it, the Dick Knight, there's a, there's a copper and red. Here's the one that I caught that Big Lake Davis rainbow on the old brass or, or gold and red. I think those are called the Hot Butt Series. Anyway, that's a dandy looking spoon there. Um, and this is one I haven't, uh, I haven't used yet. This is one size larger on a Dick Knight, but it's all black. And uh, using a dark colored lure is another thing to do when the bite gets tough. Sometimes all that flash kind of puts them off, scares them. 
Um, so when that happens, I'm kind of counting on this Black Dick Knight to save the day. Hasn't done it yet, but uh, I'm expecting big things. Now, a few days ago, you saw me catch a fish at Lake Eleanor, about a four-pound rainbow, and we'll be talking more about that fish um, in, the, in the coming week probably. However, what I caught that fish on was the small um, XL spoon. They don't make these anymore. You can't get them, but you get the idea. I mean, you compare that to the old Magnum uh, um, Speedy Shiner there, it's significantly smaller. This spoon is just over an inch long. I use these in a few colors. This is one for Shad Lake, Shad and Smell Lakes, the old blue and silver dynamite lure, just killer. Um, up in the High Sierras, I like these, these deep red or orange ones. They got a little, little flash on them. And uh, I'm always bummed when I pick up my, uh, my small XLs now because I know it's just a matter of time before I lose them. And when they're gone, they're gone. They don't make them anymore. So, and here's a here's another one. Here's another minnow pattern, chrome on chrome. But the point is, that's a small spoon. When I was up at Lake Elmnor, I was struggling a little bit. The fish were not on the bite. What do I put on? Well, I put on something I got confidence in. I knew I wanted to downsize. Out came the XL. Bam, four pound fish. That was awesome. Here's a standard, standard fare. Eighth ounce Castmaster. Got a little bit of weeds on that one still. Eighth ounce Castmaster. Two colors for me. Chrome and blue right there. Awesome bait fish imitation and gold. So in the small ones, eighth ounce dynamite lure. It'll save the day. And here's one, and I, I was kind of bummed. I talked to Vance Staplin this week, and we were talking about how effective small spoons are. And he said, you know, my sales are not good on my, well, this was formerly the Sockeye Slammer. They changed the name of this to, to, to create a little excitement. It's called the Sniper Spoon now. And uh, he was saying, you know, I guess people just aren't interested in trolling small spoons anymore. Everybody's all into the speedy shiners. They're into trolling fast. And, and you know, that is an effective way to go some of the time. Here's another Sockeye Slammer in a, in a rainbow pattern. So, but... Big spoons aren't effective all the time. Going fast isn't effective all of, all of the time. I recommend starting out fast, then slowing down. So anyway, here's another look at that orange uh, sockeye slammer. Now the sniper spoon. I've caught a lot of big fish on this. I've caught a lot of big kokanee on this spoon too. So anyway, main point is you should have some small spoons in your box that you have confidence in. And, and I gotta say, if you're just gonna have one small spoon, get some of these wee tiny dick knights. You can troll them very effectively. If you're a bank angler and you're fishing lakes, team these up with a water bobber just like you would a fly. You're able to cast them, because obviously that thing doesn't weigh very much at all, but that water bobber will allow you to cast it and get some distance. And finally, stream season is open. And uh, I am going to give you a secret. And I know some of the guides in Northern California are not going to like me disclosing this. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway. You get yourself a couple dick knights in this size. Get the chrome one. Just the straight silver chrome one. Put it on your line when you're stream fishing. And dead drift it just like you would fish a salmon egg. Put a, a split shot above it. Cast it out and drift it down and then let it swing in the current. And uh, it looks like a little tiny fry minnow that got caught in the current and can't handle the current. Um, man, it, it's deadly, it's amazing. You're not working the lure, it's just flashing and moving along in the current and they will whack it. That is a secret on the Sacramento River below Redding. When those little baby salmon are hatching and those those wild rainbows get tuned into them, you can put, you can put a whooping on them with a little silver dick knight. So I promised you a tip, and I'm gonna have to reach across my desk here to grab a couple things. But here's my tip. Here's my tip. What I've got, I got is a couple pliers. So anyway, my desk is littered with tools and pliers and guns who knows what my wife won't even come in here anyhow when you get a dick knight or, or say one of these uh i'll use i'll use one of vance's uh 
sniper spoons because they're a little bit bigger. When you get these out of the package, they come with just a standard, standard configuration. Uh, can you see that J hook on them? Let me move this over here. Just like that, just just a pretty standard J hook. Now that's fine. That'll hook fish. That'll hold fish. But what you can do to make it even more effective, and that's really important when you get down into these little t tiny guys like this. Here's what you want to do. Take this spoon. Let me figure out how to do this on camera. Well, here, take this spoon and grab the hook shank like this, like that, just like that. Take the second pliers and grab the hook. I keep looking down here because I can't, I have to look at the screen to see what I'm doing. So anyway, so there, grab the whole point in there. And what you're going to do, just give that a little, I'm giving it a twisting motion. Give it a little twist like that. Not quite enough. Twist it a little more. There we go. Now let me show you what I did. What I've done, I've offset the point of that hook slightly. If we look at the one that's not been bent, let's hold that one up for comparison's sake. There's the straight one, this straight. There's the offset one. You can kind of see the offset, see the bend in that. What that does, it'll hook the fish better and it'll hold them better. If they grab this, this is the one that I did not bend and it's flat like that, they can grab it and they can slide off the hook like that, okay? You try that with this one that's offset, you could see, see how that point rides up like that? You grab that, there's no, there's no, I'm not gonna hook my toe in the finger. There's no sliding off there. So anyway, let's wrap it up. When, uh, when the going gets tough, bust out the small spoons and uh, they could save your day. That's for sure. And remember to offset those hooks. And if you're trolling, if you're trolling for kokanee and you bust out the small spoons like this, by all means, put the little piece of corn on there. But uh, if you are going for trout, and you wanna, you know, you wanna wanna sex it up a little bit, put about an eighth of an inch of nightcrawler on there, but don't put too much. You put very much on there, overloads the spoon, you're not gonna get the action. So tip it with a little meat if you want. Another great trip if you're targeting a great tip, I can't even talk. If you're targeting rainbows, take a salmon egg, smash it, get all the shape out of it. You still got that skin with that scent pin that skin on there. But anyway, most of the time, 90% of the time probably, I'm trolling them with no tipping whatsoever for trout and I catch plenty of trout and I catch plenty of big trout. Anyway, final word, run them on six to eight pound fluorocarbon. That's it. Don't use 10 pound test, 12 pound test, too much, too stiff. Run them on that lighter line, maximum action. Run them, you know, one to one and a half miles an hour. I've talked enough, man. That's our tip for the day. Get some small spoons. Get out on the water. That's the most important part of catching fish. Get out on the water once in a while. And I will catch you next time. This is Kel Kellogg signing off.